We'll look at the information inside that window in a minute. But first I want to hijack your screen for a little bit to demonstrate some of the fun you can have with these alternate views. So first I'm going to zoom in using that new feature I mentioned, which is hidden in a drop-down window under the word More in the lower right corner. I click on More, and then zoom here, and suddenly we're far closer to Florence, but still centered on the waypoint. And I can even do that again to get closer. And now I see that the waypoint is located at a spot marked Hotel Villa Carlotta, which just happens to be where we're staying in Florence. And I'd like to look around a bit, and this information window is a little bit in the way, so I'm going to make it disappear by clicking anywhere outside of it on the map. I can always get it back again. And now I see that this panel is also taking up some space. I'm going to collapse that by clicking on this arrow to get a little more real estate. And now we have a nice big window to work with. I want to look around the hotel and see what kind of a neighborhood we're in. So I'm going to move the hotel down here to the edge of the map and as I do, I notice that my distance scale has changed to reflect the current view. Now that line is 100 meters. Near our hotel is Bobbly Gardens. And this is a very famous historic garden, and it's located behind the Petey Palace, which must be this large building here. And up in the right corner the Arno River appears. And I should tell you the blueness of the Arno like that of the Danube has been exaggerated a little here. In fact to get a more realistic view of what Florence really looks like I need to back out a bit which gives me the opportunity to mention that the place English speakers call Florence is actually a city named Firenze has been for some time. But by Shakespeare's time, English had already invented names like Venice, Padua, and Florence for places that already had names in Italian. Uh, Google Maps is very consistent in naming places in the local language. Be alert for it, but it shouldn't be a problem. So as I was saying, uh, for a more realistic picture, let's switch to the satellite view. And I do that by clicking on the satellite button. The picture changes to a photographic aerial view and we can see quite a few more things. The old part of Florence, like many old European cities, is typically cobblestones, narrow streets, few trees. In contrast, the area around our hotel, including Bobbly Gardens, is far greener and should be a very pleasant place to stay. We are located in a, an area south of the Arno called the Ultra Arno, beyond the Arno, just across from the historic city center. As I move closer, I see a lot of bridges crossing a more realistically colored Arno River. One of them this one here has a small yellow square which indicates a point of interest and as I put my mouse over it it tempts me to click which of course I'll do and that opens a window that tells me this is in fact the famous Ponte Vecchio old bridge a very historic bridge in fact the first to cross the Arno River for 600 years this has been a place that is lined with goldsmiths, silversmiths, there's even a statue of one of the first ones, Benvenuto Cellini, right in the middle. You'll want to walk across that, it's a great experience. North of that, the narrow streets of old Florence. 
And I can see a few things. Here's a railroad. This must be the train station. I notice a couple of large open piazzas that are gathering places for people as they have been for centuries. But dominating this view as it does the city is this huge complex which completely dwarfs all the other buildings in town and we want to have a closer look at that. I'm going to try to fill the screen with just that part and it is one of the great scenes of Italy or any other place. Three magnificent buildings decorated by workers who come highly recommended. Over here on the left we have the baptistry with its famous bronze doors by Giberti. The Campanile or bell tower which was decorated by Giotto. And of course the Duomo itself which is topped by Brunelleschi's magnificent dome. The very first Renaissance dome. And I love this view because I can see people up here on top of the the dome and again over here on top of the Campanile and those people have climbed a lot of steps and they're catching their breath and enjoying the view. And I can see a crowd gathering here where crowds always gather outside the baptistry to look at the famous bronze doors of Giberti. And to end the demonstration let's switch to the third available view, Earth View, which simulates the look of Google Earth but instead of having to download the Earth software we can see it right here in the web-based Google Maps environment. And I'll get that by clicking on the Earth button and once again the picture changes. This time to a pseudo 3D view where most of the buildings have a vertical component. This consumes a considerable amount of computer resources so be patient while the picture loads and redraws itself as you move around. And now the Duomo and its companion buildings can be viewed as a group. We can move around and look at them from various angles. You can even do a kind of flyby with a little practice. I may be able to even zoom in on the crowd here in front of the baptistry and see if we can see what they're looking at. And there they are. The famous bronze doors of Giberti. And I guarantee you this is no substitute for actually being there and seeing them. You'll want to marvel at the workmanship. And to finish as a finale we'll fly back to our hotel or attempt to here. And that means we have to go back toward the river which gives us an opportunity to fly over the Campanile. Watch out for that lightning rod. And here's one of those piazzas, the Piazza della Repubblica. There's another even larger one over here in front of an interesting building, a fortress with a huge tall tower. This is the Palazzo Vecchio where the Medicis used to live. And our bridge of choice to return to the Old Trano is, of course, the old bridge, Ponte Vecchio. As we fly over, look for Cellini's statue right there in the middle. It's right here. I could fly in and see that, but I'm anxious to get home. On the other side of the Arno is the Pitti Palace, this large palace, and behind it, the Boboli Gardens. And at the end of Boboli Gardens, I see a waypoint in the distance. And that, of course, is the waypoint 
in front of our hotel. And there it is. So we've come full circle and we're right back where we started again, or almost back. When we began we were in map view, so I'm going to click on map view to return to that. We are zoomed in closely on Florence and we weren't to begin with, but of course I can always click on the hand to truly go back to the beginning. And I want to retrieve my panel that contains our destinations. And now the only thing remaining to do is to click on Florence, which will bring back the information window that we want to look at. So I hope you enjoyed that and will try some of those things yourself. At this point I'm going to hand control of the screen back to Mark and I'll tell you a few things that are located inside that information window.